It's Friday. Burr, James. James, so good to have you back. Been praying for you and Karen and um, just your season of grieving. Good morning, Doug. Morning, Michael. Both Doug Tinney and Doug Forrell. Morning, Cindy. Dale Royleen, good to see you guys. Jack, Barb, Brenda, oh, so many names scrolling up, I can't even say good morning. All. Becky, Lauren's mom is here. That means my mother-in-law joins, uh, Lauren's mom joins. We got the, the moms from all over the country coming in. Oh, well, friends, I want to just say, uh, if you can be praying for our weekend, for our day, uh, taking no out of school today, going to have a dude day. His birthday's this weekend, so Big Ten going to double digits. So super grateful for him and just reminded that we are sons of God and what a privilege that is, sons and daughters of the King. And like thinking about that and thinking about what we talked about, that the Spirit lives in us, and we talked about that this week, thinking about what it means to be called beloved. Yesterday I was reading in 1 John that we're called beloved children of God. And thinking about that, just the excitement that Noah has for the weekend of his birthday, the in some ways even the expectations that he just knows that his mom and dad care for him. And so thinking about, do we know and believe that God cares for us? And what more do we need to know and believe? Like the essence of the gospel is that God gave himself for us. Like there is no length that he will not go to. And so that's why when we read in Matthew 7, it talks about if you who are evil know how to get good gifts, how much more your father who is in heaven to read in Luke 9 when he sends out the 12, that he sends them out giving them power and authority to preach the gospel, to cast out demons, to know that we have a power and authority in us makes it to where it kind of puts life in perspective, doesn't it? Like we're able to admit our weaknesses, we're able to admit hardship, our struggle, our vulnerabilities, all the while knowing that God is working powerfully within us. It's almost as if like Jesus, his greatest power was demonstrated on the cross and that's why he calls us and he says, he who seeks to follow me needs to take up his cross daily to deny himself. Like that's the true struggle. Struggle is not with our circumstances, it's not with suffering, it's not with um, the economy, it's not with the loss of loved ones. All those things are real and hard and difficult. The real struggle, the real brokenness is that we're prone towards ourselves. Like, have you ever thought about the way that we are so prone to, or at least I'm so prone to preach grace, but I spend my entire day trying to avoid my need for it, trying to avoid admitting that I'm totally dependent upon the grace of God? And so this weekend, it's cold, it's maybe you're going to bust out a fire, maybe you're going to um, light your Christmas tree, different things like that, but I think... The thing I think about when I look at those things I want to challenge you with is it says that when Jesus came in John 1 that it was the he was the light shining in the darkness. And then yesterday reading in Colossians that he's delivered us from the dominion of darkness into the kingdom of his glorious light to think about the transfiguration and what that would look like to try to look into that light. Yesterday we were driving around and the sun was just at that point where your visor doesn't really help. And so you're just kind of, but to let that light just shine, to look at the fire and how it glimmers and lights up a room with warmth, to look at a Christmas tree and how it glitters and sparkles and brings joy, to think about the sun rising and the light that it gives to the dew in the morning and just to meditate on the fact that God's warms our heart towards others, that he brings joy and joy to the fullest, that his mercies are new each and every morning. And so friends, I love you. I love that we're pursuing God together. I love the opportunity that's been given to us. And so in the midst of rising cases, in the midst of regulations and guidelines, in the midst of so many things that seek to draw us apart, let's gather in the light. Let's shine in the light, not with a way that's offensive and causes blindness, but a way that brings warmth and joy and mercy. God, thank you so much. I'm your son. And that there's nothing I can do to lose your love, to change your love, to diminish your love. 
And God, I pray that your love would shine like a light in my heart. That I have joy that is evident not just in my smile, but in the, I guess, the glitter of my eyes. That the same way that Noah is the apple of my eye, that I would know that you say in Psalm 17 that we are the apple of your eye. And God, if we truly believe that, how differently we would, we would live life knowing that we're fully loved and fully cared for and what more do we need? No more striving, no more protecting, no more hiding. And so God, this weekend, this moment, help us to believe that a little bit more. Help those of us that are filled with shame to be reminded of it. Those of us that feel like outcasts or that we don't deserve to be in your house, Lord, let us not just try to perform in a way that denies our need for grace, but let us just fall to our knees in the confession of it. God, we need you. We love you. We thank you for loving us. And it's in your son's name I pray, amen. Can't wait to gather together this weekend. Um, gonna be online and in person. And so if you're in person, we're just asking you to observe the guidelines that we're to wear masks in an effort just to protect ourselves, to protect our neighbors and to honor the authority that God has placed above us. But in that, that we're still able to worship in person if you feel comfortable. And if not, please join us online. Please invite others to join us that just are looking, that are kind of searching, that are kind of wondering what's, what's this life about? And so we're going to talk about what that looks like as we think about Jesus and how he came to us, Emmanuel, God with us. And that may seem a little bit early, like, oh, is this a Christmas? Well, prime of the pump, right? And so love you guys so much. Praying for you. Pray for me.